What is congestive heart failure? Heart failure is when the heart is unable to pump enough blood to meet cardiac output needs. Really, you can think that the heart is breaking, it's malfunctioning, it's wearing out. The congestive part of the name makes sense too when you think about that if the heart is not pumping enough, blood is backing up. There's also serious volume overload. And that leads to congestion in um, tissues and veins. The patient may say some of these sorts of things. I don't have any energy, or I get tired just walking to the mailbox. I'm short of breath. These are indicative of a decrease in cardiac output. Decreased cardiac output and tissue perfusion. Volume overload symptoms that the patient may talk about are things like, I can only sleep with a bunch of pillows propped up under me, because as they sleep at night, volume overload causes edema in the lungs. Or, I'm gaining weight, but I'm not hungry. And this is a sign that they're retaining fluid. Or, I have to go to the bathroom several times a night. So all of these symptoms have to do with volume overload. On physical exam, a few things may be noted, such as jugular vein distension. Fluid that's backed up, that's not able to get into the heart because the heart is not pumping adequately, has to wait in line in the jugular vein, among other places. So much so that the jugular vein can become um, visibly um, protruding from the skin in that area. The patient may have wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, crackles in the lungs, all signs of volume overload in the lungs. An abnormal or additional heart sound known as an S3 gallop, might be present upon um, exam. And that third heart sound is believed to be caused because so much blood is filling up the heart and it's not able to keep up and pump that blood out. So, so much blood is sloshing around inside and actually causing that third sound. In somewhat severe cases of congestive heart failure, ascites may be present. And this is um, when fluid retention causes the abdomen to swell. The liver can become congested as well. Swollen ankles and edema in a variety of tissues might be noted. So one thing that I think is really interesting and for you to keep in mind is that virtually all of these physical exam symptoms have to do with volume overload. They may also note tachycardia and some other things that go along with um, decreased cardiac output, but by and large we see symptoms that are related to the volume overload. Diagnostically, congestive heart failure uh, would usually include these tests and maybe some others as well, an x-ray that would be looking specifically for enlargement of the heart and possibly fluid accumulation in and around the lungs. So if it's in the pleural cavity, we call it pleural effusion. Um, if it's actually in the alveoli, it's pulmonary edema. In either case, we're seeing volume overload resulting in um, affecting gas exchange. And then an echocardiogram. This is a fantastic non-invasive ultrasound of the heart in which you can actually watch fluid moving through the heart. And there are three things that I think would be very notable um, in congestive heart failure on this echo. Uh, the first is 
you could see are there any valve problems. On an echo, you can actually see regurgitation, meaning if blood is able to flow backwards through a valve, that could lead to weakening of the heart over time and hence congestive heart failure. Also, you could see are the walls of the heart thickened? Or are the walls of the heart dilated, stretched out, thinned? Either one of these could occur in congestive heart failure and we'll talk about some of the pathophysiology that could result in these sorts of structural changes in the heart in the next video. And then a neat thing that can be done with an echo is an estimate of ejection fraction. This is the percentage of the blood that the heart is able to successfully pump out with each beat. And in congestive heart failure, unfortunately, this is going to be a decreased percentage as the heart is weakening and not keeping up with cardiac output needs. And then a blood test. Isn't it great if we can have a blood test that can diagnose uh, diseases, something as simple as a blood test? Well, it does turn out that in about 80% of cases of congestive heart failure, there will be a marked elevation of a hormone called BNP. Now, this hormone is uh, what we call a natriuretic peptide, meaning it will stimulate the kidneys to dump salt and water. Unfortunately, even though the heart is giving off this hormone, this BNP, it is not enough at this point to uh, reduce the volume overload effectively. Now, prevention of congestive heart failure really comes down to preventing um, the injuries to the heart because I hope it's clear by now that the heart will fail over time if it has to work too hard. So preventing or controlling coronary artery disease and preventing or controlling hypertension are going to be key. So coronary artery disease starves the heart muscle and once it's starved, those um, muscle cells are not able to beat effectively and can lead to congestive heart failure. In hypertension, the heart may thicken um, as it's trying so hard to push out blood through narrowed vessels that resist the flow. And over time, this works the heart too hard and can wear it out. So both of these can lead to congestive heart failure. And uh, valve problems, Detecting them early if possible and correcting them. This could be particularly important in children that may have a valvular defect and if not detected, then um, they might um, develop congestive heart failure at a much younger age than would otherwise be expected. Okay, well thanks for joining me and in our next video we will talk about how a heart um, can end up failing.